Well, recent heat waves have put renewed attention on the call for clean energy sources. When discussing the energy transition, electrification, solar, and wind often dominate the conversation. What about nuclear, though? The Three Mile Island incident in 1979 and then the Chernobyl disaster in 1986 have largely turned public opinion against nuclear energy, not to mention Fukushima, which really set back some nascent efforts to bring nuclear energy back. In Europe, France is the leader in nuclear power and has pushed for it to be recognized as a viable low carbon source. In Germany, in Belgium and Austria, they're all among countries in opposition. Germany has been moving away from nuclear power ever since that 2011 Fukushima disaster in Japan. In the U.S., a new nuclear reactor is opening in Georgia for the first time in 30 years. And President Biden has also announced plans to preserve clean nuclear energy as part of the 2022 infrastructure bill. That includes about $6 billion to keep up facilities and maintain jobs. Our next guest published a recent note on the future of nuclear energy in a low-carbon world. Joining us is Arkady Gavorkin, who is city commodity strategist. This is a really interesting part of the clean energy story, Arkady. Um, and there are some new technological developments in nuclear as well. Is this fi are we finally going to see sort of a new moment for nuclear energy in the United States? Yes, and thank you for having me. Um, and this is actually what we argued for. We consider last year, 2022, as a landmark in nuclear energy where uh, policies start to catch up uh, and technological advancements that's been happening in the last decade plus uh, has been coming to the final stages of the design and potentially connecting, being connected to the grid uh, by the end of this decade. Um, this is the, the report or the analysis that we provided is uh, looking broadly on the nuclear energy and uh, looking at the fission and fusion side of the things. Hmm. Um, even though fusion ha energy has been debated uh, or uh, anecdotally uh, commonly compared as the energy that we'll see in 20, 30 years away, uh, we think that's the thing of the past. And we think that uh, fusion energy uh, might be also uh, coming uh, for the commercial sc scalability uh, by the end of next decade in mid 30s. So by when but will fusion energy be commercialized, do you believe? It's really hard to give a precise uh, kind of estimate, but we think that during the next decade, during 1930s, uh, that's when uh, some of the uh, companies uh, would have a, a potential kind of breakthrough and potential uh, uh, capabilities to bring the fusion uh, energy um, to, to, and be connect and connected to the to the grid. So, uh, but before fusion, we actually think that uh, new developments in uh, nuclear energy on the fission side, uh, mainly SMRs, uh, would be prevailing and would be leading the way uh, and actually starting this decade and potentially being connected uh, to the grid in the uh, different parts of the world, uh, in Western and Eastern Europe, as well as in North America, Canada and United States. Um, typically, when you think of these projects, you think of them as very costly. And I don't think of the utility industry, the power business, as super profitable, right? It's, it's steady, right? Dependable, throws off dependable cash flow. Um, is the paradigm going to shift when it comes to nuclear in terms of the profitability of where investors should be looking? And I completely agree with you, Julia. The, the cost structure is 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 still not uh, in favor uh, for SMRs, but uh, there is uh, there there have been several studies, and uh, obviously, first of a kind uh, kind of uh, prototypes or designs uh, would probably would be at the same level uh, uh, of, of the cost structure as a, a large new builds. However, as uh, the scalability comes into play, as more and more reactors come uh, being produced, uh, the, the SMRs should cost half or even more than half uh, of, of the large new builds. Um, we uh, expect um, 
that uh, uh, this this trend will continue, and uh, this is something that also would depend on the type of the reactors that are being produced. So there, uh, in nuclear, there's generation three, generation three plus, and generation four. Uh, just not to get into very technical uh, details, but uh, currently the most uh, large nuclear build uh, nuclear plants are built on the generation three or three plus type of reactors. There are uh, very few, one or two, in the world uh, that have generation four type of reactor. Um, the generation three is uh, still using the fossil, the uranium as a main commodity in order to, uh, to fuel the reactor. However, generation four, I based, uh, there are different prototypes and they are based on the different types of the commodity that goes, but mainly it's uh, water uh, that can be consumed. So it they do have less nuclear waste, and uh, they con uh, conceive to be uh, more beneficial for the for the environment, and uh, something that probably will be the next stage in the nuclear energy. So l let me pick up on that last point then, because you have this this innovation that hopefully is less of a risk in terms of nuclear waste, and hopefully in terms of accidents. It's one thing to create that technology; it's another to sort of sway the politics and the public opinion of it. So in your analysis, how do you look at that sort of tricky human nature question? Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, nuclear energy has been around for a long time, and there's uh, accidents that you mentioned, and uh, Fukushima Daiichi accident is the latest uh, that kind of uh, put a lot of governments, uh, in including uh, Germany, uh, to kind of weave away, weave off from the nuclear energy, uh, and uh, Germany ended its uh, nuclear um, operation of its nuclear plant last year. Um, however, there's been some uh, debate internally uh, in the country of, and there is a technical capability of bringing those back up. Um, however, the policies and the public opinions have been uh, changing or, or shifting rather uh, since then. And part of it is uh, to the Russia-Ukraine crisis, part of it due to the 2021 energy crisis where wind and solar were not um, uh, that reliable and, and showed not to be that reliable. So the world learned that we actually need a base load energy to be there and to, uh, to uh, balance uh, the, the grid. Um, and that's why the the uh, new technologies uh, such as SMRs that are more secure, uh, they, the the idea is that uh, a large portion of the um, of the construction can be happening on the plant rather than on site. Something that's been criticized a lot uh, for nuclear. Um, projects where uh, whenever it's being the technology is being exported on the site there are delays uh, the there's lack of uh, trained uh, labor and uh, the more capital is typically needed whenever this is being transferred back to the plant there is more control environment and then the uh, the the, the core or the, the reactor can be put in the vessel put on the ship and be exported to pretty much anywhere in the world so that uh, brings another scale of exportability uh, mm -hmm. where um, it becomes uh, easier to, to control those things. But at the same time, there's more secure, um, uh, secure core because the SMRs are much smaller in their design and the nuclear plants. And um, th there's the ability to make it technologically more secure. Right. Arkady, you have a, a wealth of insight around this entire sector and, and industry specifically, uh, obviously here. <laughs> when we think about though, the first thing that an investor would need to know before they were to invest in any type of kind of nuclear, broader kind of economic ambitions that company or countries may put forward and, and thus the companies that are the biggest beneficiaries of some of that kind of carve out uh, of dollars that are thrust towards this type of energy. What, what is the first thing that an investor would need to know? There are several things that nuclear is here to stay and nuclear energy would be uh, part of the energy mix uh, for uh, uh, the countries that currently have nuclear plants. But at the same time, uh, it's ex expanding its scope that we see more and more countries in the Middle East uh, are uh, 
looking and and, and actively building countries in Africa. Uh, but at the same time, Asia is obviously the leader in the new builds and uh, China specifically of adding more and more nuclear plants or doubling their nuclear capacity, nuclear energy capacity. That's one takeaway. Probably the second takeaway, and this is being part of the commodity research group here at City and covering uranium, uh, closely watching the trends in it. Uh, uranium prices uh, have been on, on the highs uh, in the in the recent period and currently uh, trading about 55 um, dollars per pound of U308, which is a raw uranium, which is typically cannot be used by utilities, uh, but it, it is something that's taken by enrichers to enrich uranium and then can be used uh, by utilities. So the, the price of the uranium has been uh, rising uh, in, in the recent time due to the uh, concerns on the on the supply side, on the production, and the rising demand uh, shifting policies. So this is probably the second takeaway that um, investors can take away of the factors that that can go in. Hmm. Really interesting stuff, Arkady. Thank you so much. Really comprehensive look at where we stand in nuclear energy and where we could be going. Let's keep in touch as all this stuff develops. Arkady Gavorkin is City Commodity Strategist. Thank you. Thank you.